Following China's surprise announcement of two sixth-generation fighter jet programs on Christmas Eve, the global military aviation landscape has been significantly altered. This has prompted a renewed discussion on how countries like India should respond to these technological advancements. A key question emerging from this is whether India should consider joining the Global Combat Air Program, or GCAP as an observer, especially given the interest of founding members Italy, Japan, and the UK in expanding their collaboration. By joining the GCAP as an observer, India could gain valuable insights into cutting-edge technologies, such as advanced stealth, AI, and autonomous systems, which are crucial for future air combat. This could also aid India's own Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft or EMCA project, potentially speeding up its development. Furthermore, participation would strengthen India's defense ties with key Western nations, opening doors to technology transfers and co-development opportunities, particularly amid growing strategic competition with China. Developing a sixth-generation fighter independently would be prohibitively expensive, so joining as an observer would allow India to access advancements while distributing the financial burden. However, this role would limit India's influence on decision-making and access to core intellectual property, and the program's focus might not always align with India's specific security needs. Despite these limitations, the urgency of countering China's technological advancements underscores the strategic importance of staying competitive in air warfare. Participation in the GCAP, even as an observer, could help India enhance its military capabilities and maintain regional stability, particularly in the Indo-Pacific. Following China's recent unveiling and successful flight of its next-generation stealth fighter jet, the Indian defense community has been engaged in a heated debate. Some have suggested cancelling the Tejas MK-2 program in favor of acquiring a fifth-generation fighter from abroad while focusing on the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA, which is expected to enter service by 2035. However, the Tejas MK-2 remains a vital asset for the Indian Air Force specifically designed to address the operational challenges posed by the People's Liberation Army Air Force and its integrated air defense systems. The Tejas MK-2 represents a significant upgrade over its predecessor, featuring advanced avionics, a more powerful engine, and increased payload capacity, which are critical for countering the PLAF's IEDS. Unlike imported aircraft, it offers customization and future upgrades, ensuring its relevance over time. The aircraft's high uptime and ease of maintenance make it ideal for sustained operations, a key factor in contested airspace, unlike some advanced imported jets that face operational and logistical challenges. The Tejas MK-2 also benefits from seamless integration of new technologies, such as upgraded sensors and advanced munitions, which imported jets may lack due to intellectual property and licensing restrictions. Additionally, Reliance on foreign jets for fifth-generation capabilities exposes India to geopolitical risks and supply chain issues, while the Tejas MK-2 offers a cost-effective solution with lower operational costs. Canceling the Tejas MK-2 could also undermine India's domestic aerospace industry, hindering local innovation and technical expertise. While the AMCA is India's next-generation stealth fighter project, its induction in 2035 would leave a gap, making the Tejas MK to an essential bridge for maintaining IF capabilities in the interim. <music> India's pursuit of self-reliance in aeroengine technology is advancing with the upcoming flight tests of the dry Kaveri engine developed by the Gas Turbine Research Establishment, GTRE. This new variant, designed specifically for unmanned platforms, will undergo crucial trials in Russia next year. Godridge Aerospace, tasked with manufacturing eight modules of the dry Kaveri, is expected to deliver the engine to GTRE by February. The engine is capable of producing 48 kN of thrust without an afterburner, making it lighter and more efficient than earlier Kaveri models, a critical factor for unmanned aerial vehicles. After initial ground tests in India, the dry Kaveri will be transported to Russia for integration into an IL-76 aircraft at the Gromov Flight Research Institute in Moscow. The IL-76, known for its versatility, will serve as a flying testbed, 
providing valuable data on the engine's performance under real flight conditions, including high-altitude simulations. This integration involves replacing one of the IL-70SXS engines with the Drykaveri, allowing for direct performance comparisons. The tests will also offer insights into the engine's potential use in the Guttuk UCAV, India's indigenous unmanned combat aerial vehicle program. Successful flight trials would mark a significant milestone in India's aero engine development, providing critical data to refine the engine for modern combat UAVs. It could also open doors for increased production, export opportunities, and strengthen India's position in the global aerospace sector. India has emerged as a global leader in disaster warning systems, particularly through its Tsunami Early Warning System, which was developed after the devastating Indian Ocean tsunami of December 26, 2004, that claimed over 230,000 lives across 14 countries. In response to this disaster, the Indian Tsunami Early Warning Center, or ITUC, was established in 2007 under the Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services, or INCOIS in Hyderabad. This center is the core of India's disaster preparedness framework. The TWS operates through a sophisticated network of seismic sensors, deep ocean pressure recorders, wave rider buoys, tide gauges, and satellite communication systems, enabling real-time detection of undersea earthquakes and rapid alert dissemination to vulnerable coastal regions. Its four-step approach includes continuous monitoring of seismic activity, using computer models to simulate tsunami propagation, deploying instruments to track wave trajectories, and communicating alerts via SMS, email, radio, television, and social media. India's TWS is not only a national asset, but also a regional resource. It has been designated as a regional tsunami service provider by UNESCO's Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, offering vital advisories to 25 countries along the Indian Ocean Rim. The system has successfully issued warnings during seismic events aiding evacuation and risk reduction efforts. India's commitment to disaster resilience is further evidenced by 24 Indian communities being recognized under UNESCO's Tsunami Ready Initiative, which focuses on local preparedness and response. Moving forward, India plans to expand its warning system to cover other ocean-related hazards, such as storm surges and high waves, as part of its vision to become a Vixit Bharat or developed India. India's advancements in disaster warning systems highlight its significant contributions to global disaster management and set a standard for others to follow. The Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, recently showcased its progress in hypersonic technology by unveiling wind tunnel models of three missile systems at its hypersonic wind tunnel facility in Hyderabad. This display highlights India's advancements in high-speed missile technology and underscores DRDO's commitment to strengthening national defense. The first model, the common hypersonic glide body, is designed to travel at speeds exceeding Mach 5. It can be launched from various platforms, including ballistic missiles, providing India with a strategic advantage due to its high-speed maneuverability, making it difficult to intercept and offering a strong deterrent capability. The second model, ADH, is an anti-hypersonic interceptor missile intended for India's Ballistic Missile Defense or BMD system. Part of Phase 3 of the BMD, the ADH is designed to counter hypersonic threats, such as hypersonic cruise missiles and hypersonic glide vehicles, within the atmosphere. This development reflects India's proactive approach to addressing emerging hypersonic threats from adversaries. The third model is the long-range anti-ship hypersonic missile, LRSHM, a hybrid missile based on the K-4 missile, marking a significant enhancement in India's maritime strike capabilities. Recently tested, the LRSHM is designed to engage naval targets at hypersonic speeds, with minimal warning time, making it highly effective in naval warfare. The fourth model, P-32, represents another variant of the hypersonic glide body, indicating ongoing experimentation and innovation at DRDO. These models, still in the development phase, demonstrate India's substantial progress in hypersonic technology. Collaboration with academia, industry, and international partners 
will be essential to overcome remaining technical challenges and ensure these systems meet modern warfare's stringent requirements. That's all from YKS team for now. If you like the information, then please do share and give a like. You can also become our channel member and support our work. Thanks for watching.